The following is a presentation of the day. Slime Vikings, also winners of two in a row in a showdown of the big boys in the ECC, and it's all live on game day. Uh, game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. At Waterford Dental Health, we provide solutions to all of your dental needs. Your smile is our top priority. Visit us today at waterforddentalhealth.com and by Core Plus Credit Union. Love the home you're in? Well, borrow based on the finished value of your home before your renovations begin. Apply today at coreplus.org. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, live here at Fitch High School. And sports doctor, the Falcons have won two in a row, still have a chance in Class L. And tonight's a big test against the Eastline Vikings, so they've won two in a row as well. Yeah, and taking care of business in the ECC is what Fitch has done. If they could stay out of Fairfield County, they'd probably be undefeated this year. Yeah, uh, Case, but again, when you're coming down the home stretch of the season, you've talked about slim playoff chances maybe for Fitch. And if they entertain thoughts of that, they must win here tonight. And as for East Lyme, I mean, a, a hard-fought win last week against a, a really, really tough and London team. You know, Coach Rudy Bagos just wants to finish on a high note this year. East Lyme will receive in the white. Fitch to kick off. Going left to right, and a squib kick will roll through the middle of the field, take a high bounce where it will be downed by East Lyme, falling to the turf and covering it is Ronan McNamara, and the Vikings will come out with one of your guys, yeah, Will yeah, Anglin, yeah. at quarterback. Yeah, Will Anglin, I got a chance to coach him during Summer League this year, Casey. He's also with the leading tackler in the secondary for Coach Rudy Bagos. You're going to see a lot of Will, and you're going to see a lot of Rowan Mundell as well. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to go on the limb and say Will Anglin may be one of the best throwers, pure throwers in the ECCs. You know, he's had to grow into this position this year, and he's handled it very well. What I love is uh, most you know, coaches avoid their quarterback with any contact whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, right. He's the leading tackler on, yeah. on the East Lyme team. And he will operate out of the shotgun. He'll have Mundell standing to his left on first down. <laughs> Little inside handoff to Mundell and nothing there. He's brought down almost immediately. Tackle made by Ty Ambrose. And, uh, you know, la last week, Sports Doctor, both of these teams won games that I think you and I thought they were going to lose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, a hard-fought 12-7 win over London by East Lyme. And then, you know, NFA uh, didn't even show up against Fitch last week. <laughs> lost 28-7. Go figure out that NFA team. But, you know, one thing that showed me last week was that East Lyme can handle the physicality up front because London's very physical up front. Anglin's going to keep it himself and not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Good pursuit out there, and he finally brought down by Aiden Greaves. But you talk about the Falcon defense, you know, we're going to say a lot about guys like Elijah Shelton and Sean Porter, but that defense, like you said, once they got out of Fairfield, has really played well. Back to back weeks, uh, Woodstock, a good offense, New London yep. defense starting to come around a little bit for uh, Fitz, excuse me, uh, NFA at Stratford. Two good offensive teams, and uh, Fitch standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Third and 14, Anglin will throw. Lots of time. Deep sideline route overthrown. He was looking for Mason Senkow, and he was well defended on the play by Malachi Maddox, and the Vikings will go three and out on their first possession. Well, Fitch is, you know, Casey, one of their strengths you talked about is their defense. You know, they give seven points to Stonington, seven points in the London shutout bacon. Obviously, those two trips to Fairfield didn't help. 14 points against the Stratford team, and then held NFA to seven as well. So their defense has showed up in some of these games this year. Yeah, they gave up 79 points to Fairfield teams. <laughs> yeah. And I don't believe they've given up 79 points no, total the no, rest no, of the year. No, no, they have not. Yeah. Boy, would they like those two games yep. off the schedule. And it hasn't been easy this year for Mike Ellis. We'll talk about that a little bit, too. You know, he's, he's had a chance to talk to him on the field before the game, Casey, and he talked about, you know, just kind of the inconsistency with participation this year in the program and, you know, some of the kids who you can rely on, who you can't rely on. He, he actually told me this was one of the most challenging years this year. Not as many bodies. Uh, you know, the buy-in hasn't been there. If you watch right. the feature, uh, feature today that uh, – 
was produced on John Luthi. Part of his value to the team is he's kind of holding them together right now. Mm. Only one captain sent mm. out for the coin toss, and that was Luthi. First down, motion. Going to throw in first down, little swing pass to Maddox. It's caught. He's well defended. Mundell's not going to let him go anywhere. And he's going to be brought down for a gain of maybe not even a, a loss of a yard, but we'll see a flag as well. Could be a face mask against Mundell. You know, Mundell's one of those tough kids, really scrappy. A little handsy there up by the face maybe. Could cost East Lime 15 yards. Yeah, personal That's foul face is. mask, so that'll be a big gain for the Falcons. Fitch has struggled with quarterbacks this year. They've been bouncing back and forth. You've seen senior Sean Beebe there for a while. Sophomore Ben Perry has played some quarterback. So different guys have been under center. They seem to have settled last week. Perry had a good week. Mm. So they've shifted Beebe out into, in, you know, away from the quarterback role. But in any given week, it could be either one of them. So no, uh, Perry's under center and Beebe's on the wing. Handoff. Williams straight up the middle big gain uh, by Thomas Williams on first down it'll be close to a first down after they spot it that's that bread and butter for this Fitch Falcon offense to try and pop the fullback in Casey off that dive play you know we've seen kids like Hollis Scott take that position or Pedro Mojica nice pickup by Williams there on first down second down and two and this is the kind of down and distance that Mike Ellis likes to operate his offense from yeah, that the double the double dip last mm. week, Malachi Maddox and Thomas Williams, the two electric playmakers that Fitch has. Williams, the bigger of the two, is the back. He gets the handoff and he'll have a first down as he's gonna be stopped before he gets to the twenty yard line. He'll be back to say maybe the twenty four. Big push up front, offensive line moving bodies, and he's, you know, four or five yards past the line of scrimmage before he's even touched. They had had a lot of success running him outside. They, you know, it's taken Fitch, and I give Mike Ellis a lot of credit. They've, they've changed their look almost every week. Mm. Uh, Williams had been the toss sweep guy to the outside. Now he's lining up and taking mm. the snaps as the fullback. Running up the gut, yeah. And he's getting more yards. He, he doesn't, he's got the size to be the in-between the tackle runner, and that's put Maddox on one of the wings, and there's Maddox in motion. Handoff again, Williams bounces off a tackler and another crosses the 15 yard line. Big gain on first down by Thomas Williams. Yeah, it's Blake Harris trying to fill the hole that time for East Lyme and just got run over. And again, Williams doing work. Thomas Williams. So they're gonna say that was actually a first down. So they're gonna move the chains. Gonna mark the ball at the 13 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 at the 13. And Pretty, pretty effortless right now for Fitch moving to football against that East Line front. North-South running, nothing fancy. Feed it to number eight, let him do his thing. First down, a little hard count. East Line almost jumped, but they didn't. Hand off again, Williams off left tackles, spins and runs backwards as the offensive line pushes him towards the sticks. I believe he's right down at the five yard line. Well, message received in the uh, coming out to start the game. <laughs> we we're going to run the football at the gut by Mike Ellis. You know, number eight, get ready to eat because you're going to need a lot of helpings tonight. Not a lot of uh, trickery. No, just in the first play, and they got, you know, 15 yards on, on the penalty. So there you go. That was probably the trickiest thing we were going to see, that first play. Yeah, that we think so. We're going to run the NASCAR package. Mike Ellis likes to run the NASCAR package. You just like saying the NASCAR package. I do. <laughs> Second and short, Williams. Takes the handoff again, this time not much there, but he didn't need much, so I think they're gonna mark him close at the first down marker. He'll be just inside the five. If he can cross to the three, it'll be a first down and goal. And he's down to close to one. It'll be first and goal from the one. First and goal, ball at the one yard line. And again, this is nothing fancy. This is just number eight, right off the gut. First down, Falcons quarterback, keeper. Perry pushing forward and just waiting for the official signal. In for the touchdown, sophomore Ben Perry. So he hands the ball off a bunch of times. Thomas Williams gets down to the one foot line and the sophomore takes it in for the touchdown. Quick six nothing lead on the opening drive for Fitch. Six for s number six and that was just too easy for the Falcons. I mean, outside of that first pass play which got him nowhere with the penalty but this, it was number eight up the gut. It was just all the offensive line moving bodies and uh, keep it simple and push it in over the goal line for six points. So six nothing, extra point attempt coming now for the Falcons. They will 
spot the ball at the 10 yard line. Well, that's where the hold will be, I should say. Right. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up and through. 7-0, Falcons. Extra point by Charles uh, Cabuso is good, and it's 7-18 remaining. 7-0, Falcons. Well, one thing that stands out, Casey, is the physicality up front right now for Fitch. East line goes three and out. Fitch gets the ball while well, they go 50 yards for a touchdown. And again, on both sides of the football right now, East line getting pushed around a little bit. Let's see how they kind of change things up offensively right now in the set. A lot going on in the postseason around the state right now. The postseason volleyball and soccer, both boys and girls, are active right now. We will have a bunch of scores for you, and we'll try to give you an update on the bracket, some interesting matchups. But, you know, you were saying you don't know how good the football in the ECC is, you know, other than Killingly is, you know, who can compete. Right. Well, in uh, soccer, both boys and girls, as well as volleyball, the ECC acquitting itself mm -hmm. very nicely yep. around the state right now. Number 11, Charles Cabuso will tee it up. So Cabuso will kick it off for Fitch from his Four own 40-yard line. Angles, by the way, Rutgers. when do you see a quarterback returning kicks to, by the way? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> and playing free safety and um, I mean, handing yeah. out the drinks during timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the... He's been added to the punt coverage team. The as punt well. coverage, yeah, you go. Uh, <laughs> right. Yesterday, uh, he can do it all. Uh, Another squib kick, and it comes down to Anglin. He'll take it at his own 30-yard line, head straight up the field, and he'll cross the 40 to the 41-yard line. So, quarterback Will Anglin, uh, you know, he told me, sports doctor, that yeah. uh, that he was always the best coach you ever had. He was a little shy. Yeah, uh, you know, he didn't even know if he was going to play football. Right. But you so inspired him in summer league basketball that yeah. he decided he wanted to play every position. <laughs> He told me that's what Yeah, I, I know. He's, he's well, one he of said my it with guys. his eyes anyway. Yeah, you know, he's, he's one of my guys. I had a chance to talk to Rudy Bagos before the game. How about this? Rudy's going down to Clemson this weekend to go see UConn Clemson, and he's going to play golf on Sunday down there. And I promise you, golf would be the much that's better, right. would be a much better experience <laughs> than the UConn Clemson game. So Rudy Bagos thanks the, uh, the game for being played on uh, Thursday night. Handoff, Mundell, that ball is loose. Fitch is saying they have it right at the 40. We'll wait for the official signal. Well, the body's down there. I think Fitch has got it. Yeah, Fitch has got the football. Bad exchange between Anglin and Mundell, and not a good start for East Lime. Uh, very, very flat for the Vikings. Three and out in the first possession. Mundell puts the ball on the turf on the first and, and their fourth play of the game. And, you know, right now, Casey, Fitch is bringing the energy. They're bringing the physicality, and they're, they're dominating the game early. So early in the year, Clemson, who, who is having a terrible season. Right. You know, Clemson, who is a perennial national champion. Right. And then, you know, can't beat anybody. And they said on TV jokingly that anybody in the country can beat Clemson right now. Well, this coming weekend is proof that that's not true. That's not true. That's not <laughs> true. That's not true. <laughs> well, I mean, here you go. Higher score, the Clemson score or Rudy Bagos' 18-hole score <laughs> in the gut? <laughs> toss left and handoff straight up the gut, rather. That's Williams, Williams again. again. They yeah. fake the toss left and the handoff straight up the middle. Williams with another gain of six on first down. No penetration up front for East Lime. They got to start shooting the gaps and start moving some bodies around. But if not, I mean Williams would just kind of run it down their throats in every single play. I will say this: um, I think you know I don't think Rudy Bagos is going to break 85 down in Clemson. I can see Clemson maybe scoring 70. Okay. How about that? All right, so close. I'm gonna, it's close. Nine hole score: Bagos or Clemson. Clemson. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, Maddox in motion, back to the wing position. Now he goes back in motion again. Handoff straight up the middle. Williams, big hole, hurdles a man, foot race, sprint, and he's going to win it straight up the gut. Touchdown, Falcons, Thomas Williams, T-dub for six. Yeah, good night, says Williams. 34 yards and untouched up the middle. And again, I mean, they're just spoon-feeding this kid to football, and he is... Having a meal and then some tonight. Yeah, that was easy. Uh, Too easy. Got through the hole, had one man, you know, even in a position to make a tackle. He just kind of sidestepped them, and, mm. and it was just a straight sprint up the middle of the field. I don't know that he went more than half a yard left or right when he got the ball. That was Eric Dickerson north-south straight-up running style right there. The 
Abuso in for the extra point. Good snap, good hold, high spiraling. Extra point is good. 6-11 in the first period, 14-0 Falcons just like that. And we've got a timeout on the field, so we should let you know that this timeout is brought to you by CREC, bringing the light to mental health through opening doors and opening minds. Learn more at CRACCT.com. Should also mention well, that officially today, uh, Donovan Klingen signed yeah. his letter of intent, or yesterday, I should say, with uh, for to go to UConn. And if you don't know who Donovan Klingen is, well, he's a top 25 recruit going to UConn out of Bristol. And uh, Bristol Central and East Catholic are going to be playing in the first ever day holiday classic on December 20th at Mohegan Sun Arena. So game day is so proud to, to be able to present the Waterford Ledger boys at 6 o'clock and then the East Catholic Bristol Central boys at 8 o'clock. Klingon will be there for all the eyes to see. So if you're a, a UConn basketball yeah. fan or just a fan of high school basketball, yeah. go check out the kid who's, who's going to, I think, is going to average a triple-double this year. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Points, okay, rebound, seven, points seven, rebounds, and blocks. 76 yards and a touchdown for Williams, for Fitch, in the first uh, – Five minutes and what, 49 seconds? Is that, about, is that right? Yeah. Another squib kick. This time it hits it a Viking, ball. and Vikings will fall on it. Matt Leone will fall on it, Matt and Leone. it'll oh, be East Lime ball. But so far, three and out, and then a fumbled exchange yeah. on a first down. The Vikings have to put a little something together. Six oh eight remaining here in the first period. Fourteen nothing. East Lime trails Fitch, but they have the football. Let's see if they can move it. Right now, East Lime has got to string together some positive plays. I mean, anything, they just got to do something that moves them forward. Also, oh, they're going to go to a little bit of a different set. Double wing, wingman in motion. Pitch right, not much there. Pete, uh, Patterson, Aiden Patterson. And he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing there. It's all about the line of scrimmage right now, and East Lime has not established, you know, an offensive line of scrimmage or a defensive line of scrimmage and getting pushed around up front right now. This is not a quintessentially big Falcon defense either. No. I mean, this is a more of a speed defense the yep. Falcons have. They really rely on their ends. Porter and Shelton on yep. the end are their really only size. Everybody else is quick to the ball. And right now... Yeah, they're not a very big team. And East Lime's going to call a timeout, talk things over a little bit. East Lime doesn't have a lot of size up front either, Casey. They're, like I said, I mean, you talked about the pure numbers. Look at the numbers on the sidelines for both, you know, East Lime and Fitch. I mean, yeah, usually there were 60, 70 kids for some of these programs on the sidelines. Yeah, and these two schools combined right now would not be as big as some of the teams we've already seen this year. Coming right. down and... Uh, you know, you and I talked about how good Darian was when yeah. we saw them that night. Turns out they're every bit that good and then some. Yes. I just asked St. Joe's. Yes. <laughs> and so when we saw Darian come down, we got a chance to see a program. They were they had as many bodies as these two schools have combined. Oh, and yeah. These are, and these yeah. are big schools yeah. with just down numbers right now. They got 70 kids on the sidelines of Darian. They also had a 70-inch flat-screen TV that I had my eye on. Yeah. <laughs> if I could have found a way to get it in my car. Your raffle number was not pulled that night. I'm no, sorry. It was yeah. a blue ticket. You had a red one. Second and 10. Anglin under center. They operate from the eye, and he's going to throw on a straight drop. Deep sideline pattern. Airs it out. Has a man, and it's just overthrown. He was looking uh, for Leon. Leon, and just over those outstretched arms. Not a bad throw by Anglin. Just missed. He is, you know, he is one of the better throwers in the ECC, and he can he can make that throw deep down the sidelines. Just overshot Leon a little bit. Casey, and we've talked about this, too. How many times in these high school games have we seen the middle of the field wide open? You know, let, let's get a tight end, or let's spring somebody out. And let's, let's work the middle of the field. I don't understand why some of these high school teams, sidelines, sidelines, sidelines. Well, the middle of the field would be wide open. Third and ten, East Lime has not had a positive play yet on this young evening. Anglin pressured, and he's going to be sacked. Sacked, Luthi got through, brought him down, big loss, and East Lime really struggling here to move the football. 
And they don't have one positive yardage play tonight. This is what their three and out, three and out, their seventh play on the offensive side of the football. Is there a flag down? No, no flag. So seven offensive plays and no yards for the Eastline Vikings. I also love when my punter wears 55. He's lying. Rudy Bago's doing it unconventionally. Got my quarterback returning kicks. Oh, it's I got ski. my lineman it's, punting. It's David, it's ski. It's one of my guys. One of my, one of my basketball That's guys. ski. That is ski. High snap. We're going to go up. We got a rebound from the sports doctor. Mm -hmm. Punt taken just inside midfield hey, by Greaves. Yeah. That's your boy, David Semnoski. Can we applaud the lost art of catching the punt. Somebody yes, caught a punt. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. That's a good point. That's yeah. an excellent point, Peter. We've mentioned it on multiple broadcasts that no one catches punts anymore. Mm. I mean, they just let them drop and you know let the chips fall where they may. And that's with, by the way, wide receivers who are, you know, who are supposed to be able to catch the ball. They go back and they just let them bounce. Falcons with their third possession. They've scored on both of the first two and they have it first and ten. Quarterback keeper by Perry on first down, and he'll gain four yards. I, you know, I'd, I'd be shocked if you saw a play outside of the tackles for the rest of the night, <laughs> the way these, the, the way these uh, balls being run. Really no reason for it. No, not right now. You're getting five, six, seven, eight yards and 30 yards a clip, and, and it's just all about the, uh, the up-front play, the offensive line. Second and five. Perry under center, Williams, lone back. Another quarterback keeper by Perry. So they must have nobody over the nose right now. Right, so he's, he's just calling his tap, own tap, number. Tap and go. That's all he does. Calls his own number. You're right. Which. He sees it. He's, he, as a quarterback, he sees it, yes. That might be a good defensive strategy, though, because he's probably only look, putting his head down to get four or five yards at a time. Or Williams could be getting eight or ten. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your poison, yeah. I mean, he's got eight yards on two carries. That's probably the best that the Vikings defense has had so far. Third and two. Hand off Williams. They got a hand on him, but mm. in the backfield, but not before he gets a first down and moves the chains. Now, can you go one on one against these wide receivers and then, then put nine guys in the box? Yes. Yeah, you, I think you have to at this point. Yes. It like nine guys within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no if question. If they pop one, they pop one. But you got to try and stop them at the point of attack. You know, if they throw the football and they beat you throwing the football, that's fine. But I would put nine guys in the box, no further than three yards from the line of scrimmage, and put up a wall. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm not a football coach, but, I, you know. There's one thing I might do a little differently. Option. Perry slips away. He's going to get buried and loses some yards. Brought down yeah, Mundell. by Mundell behind the line of scrimmage. That was looked like a broken play yeah. where Perry was supposed to hand off. I don't know that you put nine in the box. I think you put four on the line of scrimmage or five on the line of scrimmage and then you put shoot linebackers gap. and you yeah, you yeah, have you shoot the gap. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise there's really there's then you just break one tackle and you're gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean one deep safety maybe, I don't know. No, no safety. No safety, yeah. Second and fourteen, the Vikings defense needs to step up here. They've struggled in the early going. Toss right. Maddox, big hole. Maddox shows some speed, cuts it back inside, breaks a tackle, still on his feet. They haven't gotten him down yet. He's almost to the 25-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down, a big run by Malachi Maddox. Yeah, good blocking downfield, too, by the Fitch wide receivers, Casey. A spring Maddox in the outside, and has a big, big gain on second down and 14. He get 13 yards on that play. Maddox showed you a little bit of speed, and he showed you a little toughness at the end of that run. Stick your head down and... Get an extra four or five yards, son. He and Williams have really been the dynamic duo. Tonight, Williams has been Batman, but that time, Maddox, big run. Handoff, Williams, first down before they chop his feet and bring him to the ground, but it'll be a move the chains and a new set of downs for the Falcons. Fast moving first quarter, 143 left to go. First down, pitch up. First down, Falcons. Ball's going to be spotted at the 25-yard line of East Line. The most frustrating Boston team is about to start their game tonight. That the Bruins? Be, yes. All right. Yes. 
Still don't know what to make of him. Little screen pass. Out it goes to Greaves. Missed tackle, and Greaves will get maybe to the 20-yard line. Will Anglin on a stop out there, the quarterback. Hanging on for dear life. Grabbing the ankles. Bringing Greaves down. Starting quarterback, uh, he plays safety. And on the kick return team, punt, punt coverage, return team, yeah. punt return. Yeah. And my understanding is that he's uh, gr grilling burgers at halftime. <laughs> Go check him out in the snack shed. Ketchup only, please. Really? Ketchup only on a ketchup burger? Ketchup only. Cheese, cheese, ketchup. Oh, I'm not going to give me a bacon cheeseburger down there. No, 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 no. No pickles, no right, no, no. no mustard, no relish. Right. Big hole, Williams off tackle, first down. Inside the 10, down to the five yard line. It's gonna be first and goal, Falcons. Thomas Williams is just too hard to stop right now. They're approaching 100 yards in the first quarter. And again, the offensive line is making some holes big enough for me to run through right now. It's just too easy right now for the Fitch Falcons to be first and goal from the five. First and goal, Falcons from the five yard line. There's about 23 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So let's see if they try to sneak in this play before the quarter winds down. Looks like they're going to. Handoff, Williams churning. And they're gonna mark him down right at the one foot line, which is a really bad mistake by the officials because now they have to go 99 and a half yards. <laughs> to the other side of the field. To the other side of the field. You gotta just say, you know what, you're, you're in. Give it to you're him. in you right can't there. just you're give in. it to him. Come gotta, on. We're at the end of one. Falcons, 14 nothing and literally knocking on the door. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Start the conversation about mental health. Ask, are you okay? Show you are listening by sitting alongside the person and by maintaining comfortable eye contact. Say, I've noticed that. Explain behavior changes you've noticed and express genuine concern. Ask, do you want to take a walk? Engaging in an activity together can be a great way to relieve nerves while talking. Ask, how are you really? Sometimes when someone says they're fine, they're not. Know the warning signs so you know when to offer extra support. To learn more, visit CRACCT.org. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. Game Day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Our entire team dedicated to providing you the personalized gentle care that you deserve. You should visit them today, waterforddentalhealth.com or 177. Boston Post Road in Waterford. Casey O'Neill of the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, 14 nothing Falcons, and they'll have a second and goal from the one foot line. About to punch it in. It's been all Thomas Williams. Little dose of Malachi Maddox, but Williams has been the workhorse. This time, Perry will keep it himself. And again. <laughs> Perry's second touchdown of the night. <laughs> so Williams, <laughs> Williams does all the work, and Perry says, I'll take it in for six. Second touchdown for the sophomore, Ben Perry. And uh, five seconds into the second period, it's 20 to nothing, Falcons. And they'll bring Cabuso out for the extra point. A little swing gate, is this what this is right here for the extra point? I don't really know what the pur purpose of this is. Everyone knows you're kicking the extra point, so I... I is that what it is, the swinging gate? Is that what they call that? Yeah, it's a rusty gate as far rusty as I'm gate, concerned. Rusty gate, swing gate, yeah. Should be, uh, I mean, come on, this is old school football. So Mike Ellis' father probably called this in the sidelines. Good snap, a little low, good hold, kick is high. Will it have enough? Will it have the distance? No. No good, wide right. <laughs> snap was a little low, hold yeah, was a little bad. It was the rusty gate, that's why it, it was is. a rusty gate, that had a nail. All right. Williams, uh, 102 yards in the first quarter. And two touchdowns by Perry, yes. so far. From a, t for a to from a total of uh, a yard away. Yard away, <laughs> All right, so let's get you up to date on the soccer scores. We mentioned that the ECC has acquitted itself nicely. Let's start with Griswold, the number four seed. A one nothing win over the number 20 seed, Immaculate, in Class S. Thanks for Immaculate driving from Danbury to Griswold and then having to turn around after a one nothing loss. They're probably still on the road. That Immaculate team was a good team. We saw them beat Montville the other night. Ledger in an 8-9 matchup with a very good soccer school in Granby. Three-nothing winners for the Ledger Colonels. They continue on their march 
towards a state appearance. Uh, Norwich Tech, with the 20 seed, knocked out by number four, Law, in Class M, 3-0. Waterford, the 18, tried to pull the upset against number two, Suffield, but came up short, 1-0, Suffield, your final. Sam Montalto, three goals, 101 in his career, wow. as the number three seed, Stonington, rolled Plainville, 4-0. Up next for Stonington, the Bacon Academy Bobcats who upset Weston in PKs after a 1-1 tie. Bacon's reward, Stonington in that game. Weathersfield knocked off Woodstock 4-0. EO Smith, a 4-0 winner over New London in the 23-7 game. So EO Smith making a little run from the 23 seed. And Fitch, mm. high bouncing ball downed by East Lyme. Fitch, I talked to Jay Wolfrat at the ECC Finals, and he said, we get a good opener with Prince Tech, mm. and if we can get our feet under us, we're going to be tough for Middletown, the three seed. And the today. Falcons, the 14 seed, knocked off the three seed Middletown, 2-1 mm. in overtime. So a lot of teams still left in, uh, in the ECC boys soccer. And in field hockey, number two Stonington beat Laurelton 2-1 in overtime. Is that, is that so Tuccio? Tuccio? Still, Jenna's still coaching there? No. Doing hey. a thing, right? Fullback dive for East Lime, and they'll get half a yard. That could be the first positive play for East Lime tonight offensively. Yeah, it was. Their eight, it. Only their eighth offensive play. Yeah, Fabian Riley, the fullback, took the uh, fullback dive and got two yards. That's the biggest play of the game for him. On second down, Anglin's going to throw. Pressured. Rolls, throws, and just kind of gets rid of it. Had a man in the vicinity, or else that would have been intentional grounding. And I wonder how many times high school quarterbacks, despite knowing the rule, Dump ro it. roll out and throw it away because that's what they see at yeah. every level elsewhere. Third and long here for East Lime. They're going to have the ball at the 42-yard line, their own 42-yard line. Mundell will stand next to Anglin. Blitzing from the edges. Anglin's going to step up, keep it himself, breaks a tackle, and he'll be down just Close. shy of the first down marker right at midfield. And I would think if you're Rudy Baker, he's going to go for it here. Fourth down and one, down 20 to nothing. Yeah, what else do you have to lose? Nah, nothing. You're four and four. You're not going. Nah, yeah, you got you to gotta go for it. No brainer. I'm not even thinking about it. They'll go, maybe give Mundell a football here, maybe have England keep it himself. I'm going quarterback keeper. No. Fourth and a foot, ball right at midfield. Anglin has the under center, eye formation. Hand off Mundell, he's not gonna get it. He's gonna get stuffed, stuffed. not even close, couldn't even get back, and I don't like the play call. No, no, I mean, Mundell is coming from what, six, seven yards in the backfield, and then by the time he gets it, the big push up front by Fitch. And they will turn East Lime away on downs on fourth and one. Listen, he's a, he's a tough kid, as tough as they come, but he's All also right. the smallest kid on their offense. You got you need a half a yard. You don't want a slow developing play. You want to no. you want to take the ball and have your six foot three quarterback just go straight ahead. Yeah, get six inches. Mm -hmm. But instead, the Falcons will take over at the East Lime 49 yard line. They're already ahead 20 to nothing with 10:32 remaining here in the half. East Lime will call timeout. Clock things over a little bit. Down 20 to nothing on the road, 10.32 left. Just coach them up a little bit, pick up their spirits. You know, make some adjustments and go from there. And while we have this timeout, we should let you know that this timeout is brought to you by CRAC, bringing the light to mental health through opening doors and opening minds. Learn more at CRACCT.com. Boy, it's hard to believe it's November, what, 11th yes. today? Yes. I mean, the stretch of weather we've had the last two weeks has been amazing. You were off today. You almost forgot you had a game tonight. You know, it, it's, we don't normally do Thursday night football. Right. Uh, and I, and the NFL does. Yeah, today was Veterans Day. Yeah. Th thank you for your service, sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I was home doing a little uh, cleaning at the house, and I, around 3.30 I said to my son, AJ, I said, do me a favor, remind me that I have game day tonight because I'm going to forget because <laughs> it's just a random what Thursday. Are you home lounging or something like that? Or cleaning the house? Cleaning yeah. the house. I mean, chipping and putting in the backyard. Maybe. I don't know. Have you put your clubs down for the year? No. They're still a great net country. There you go. Handoff Williams. 
and he's just, I mean, he's just a hard man to bring down. He's going to get seven on first down. About 109 yards. Well, Williams had 102 before that carry, so seven there. So give him 109 yards, and there had been nothing sexy about it. It's north, south, up to shoot, running. I played last weekend, actually. Did you? Where'd you play? Played up at, uh, up in Grizzled, up at River Ridge. Of course, in really good shape. I hit a lot of balls in the fairway that I could not find. All it's fall leaves, golf. There's the leaves, leaves yeah. and the sun and everything, and uh, I had a lot of fun. Good group of guys, and um, made some birdies, made some bogeys, made some triples and some doubles. You name it, I was all over the map. Sports Dr. Golf. Yeah, good time, though. Maddox in motion. Handoff, Williams. He's going to have a first down, and he'll get wrestled to the ground. You know, Williams, if you Different look at Different look that time. It's a bit of a stretch play that time, though, Williams. And if you look, his offensive linemen were with him. I mean, they're put, that's, that's yeah. telling you that they're pushing guys five and six yards down the field. You know, hasn't you know hasn't Mike Emery kind of made his bread and butter here in the last five or six years on the offensive line? I know, look at they're a little undersized this year, and you know they're down a little bit. It's a bag of trick or treat candy coming in here. Pass it over here. But you know, isn't that isn't that what Mike Emery's kind of like made his bread and butter on the last five or six years here? I'm sorry, Mike Ellis. I'm sorry. Yes, and I have a thanks. Funny story to tell you. Toss left. And brought down almost immediately was BB. As Dean. Connor. BB. So it was six years ago, Peter Wappi, that we did one of Mike Ellis' early games here at Fitch versus East Lyme. It was, we're going to call it Letelier Gate. The famous <laughs> Luke Letelier, fabulous game here against yeah. East Lyme. I was watching Wired Zones the other night with um, with AJ, and we looked at the East Lime uh, uh, Fitch Wired Zone from six years ago, right. where Mike Ellis was new to the position here at Fitch and was trying to bring and instill his character onto mm. this organization. Hand off Williams. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and not much else. And that's a nice job that time. Little uh, Ski on the tackle, number 55. East Lime doing a little better job at the point of attack there. Of course, I... Called Luke Letelier, Luke Letelier, 12 catches, 190 yards, four <laughs> touchdowns. That game against yeah. Bacon was, um, that was a tremendous game that night. Uh, the best, we it, AJ and I agree, the best wired zone is the Fitch-Bacon game. Because mm. uh, Peter Wappy cut together uh, the highlights where with Mike Ellis' halftime, an epic halftime yeah. speech. That's the great if you ever decide to play with some pizzazz. He yeah. chal challenges Duncan to take over, to defend. It was just such a great game. A lot of great names in that. Third down. Perry's going to throw. Rolls to his right. Pressured and brought down a big play out on the edge. Your guy, Ski. Samansky with a tackle for a big loss. And the biggest loss for the Falcons tonight, almost all the way back to midfield. Yeah, Samansky playing a little angry on that play. a boy, Ski. Back-to-back -back tackles for losses by number 55 out there. And... Maybe that sparks him a little bit. I mean, it's the first time they've held uh, Fitch tonight. He looks like a middle linebacker. Yeah, he way. does. He's a tough kid. I mean, he, play, and he, he, he plays way, basketball. He plays basketball like a middle, like a middle, middle linebacker, linebacker yeah, too. I don't ask him to do much more. I mean, you, uh, you, told, you said he, was, he embraced the uh, sports doctor's don't think mentality. Yeah, yeah. BB with a punt. Inside, it bounces and goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So you, you know, you talk about high school athletes and you know understanding their roles and stuff like that. I think that's a kid that understands his role on the football field, being a tough guy, being an enforcer a little bit, and on a basketball court, he's a bit of a tough guy and a bit of an enforcer. You know, he's not going to shoot from the three-point line. Didn't care if he shoots the ball. You know, he's 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 a he's a hard-nosed kid. Talk. I think Mundell's like that out there, too. Yeah. Rowan Mundell's like that, too. Very hard to I talked with Ledger, the basketball coach, DJ Exum, about, you know, the upcoming basketball season. He said one of the things he loves is he's got a bunch of football players, Ledger football players, on the basketball team. Yeah. He says, you know, the toughness that you get from football can really translate to those kids into basketball. You need a couple guys like that. And I think, you know, East Lyme is going to have some basketball players that are football players. Little jet sweep. Biggest play of the game for... The Vikings, Jeremiah Jean with the. Jean is a sophomore. He comes off the wide receiver position, takes a little jet sweep. At the first first down tonight for the Vikings. They needed it. They needed it. So first down, they'll go back to four wide. Mundell is in the backfield. 
Six and a half minutes remaining here in the first half, 20 to nothing. Anglin's gonna keep it himself. Breaks outside, has a big run down the sideline for a first down, knocked out of bounds inside the 40. Well, I think what you've seen in the last two plays is Eastline trying to spread Fitch out a little bit, four wide, you know, maybe some misdirections, maybe some draws, some different plays to kind of keep Fitch guessing a little bit on defense. And, and, and let a kid like Anglin, you know, call the shots. That time he kept it himself and, you know, back-to-back -back gains were over 10 yards. I think that hat-on-hat -hat mentality is not working for East Lamb on offense, so do what you got to do to mix it up a little bit. No, I think you're right. Shotgun, Anglin, handoff, Mundell trying to get outside. A lot of Falcons pursuing him, and it's going to be no gain. A lot of running for no yards. Yep. Eventually brought down by Cabuso, but the whole left side of the of the Falcon right. defense was pretty much just chasing and him around. And maybe what you do with Mundell now is you go the four wide, then you do a draw with him. Try to catch them, you know, kind of over pursuing up front or, you know, hit him on a little dump pass across the middle. I mean, Mundell can make some plays. He just needs some space. Second down, Anglin to throw. Pressured by Shelton, and he's going to be... Breaks away from Shelton on his feet. He's going to still be brought down for a sack. Maybe got to the line of scrimmage, but Shelton put on the early pressure, and Anglin was lucky to escape. Yeah, he was looking downfield. I think he lost a grip on the football, had to tuck it and dodge a few guys, and like I said, just get back to the line of scrimmage. But, you know, Anglin, again, he's just quick on his feet. I tried to pull a trigger on the throw. He had to re-grip, re-grip, ball came out. Tough third down distance for this East Lime offense. Third and 11. Anglin rolls to his right. Looking to throw down. Got a man deep. Steps into it, throws it. Doesn't get a lot on it, and it's tipped by Maddox. He had Leon behind the defenders, but... He had Leon probably four steps before he even threw the football. Leon got behind the defense. Anglin just couldn't set himself and throw it, but Leon was open. That's a long throw for Anglin to make, but if he had his head up on a little sooner, Casey had a guy open. I think, honestly, that's a, I think he tried to muscle up a throw he didn't have to muscle up. I watched him in warm-ups, mm. throwing the ball 40 yards yeah. on a rope with, with a free, easy, kind of nonchalant. Right. That time, he, he stepped into it like he needed to throw it 60 yards. Mm. He didn't. He just needed to throw it 40. Leon was behind a defender, too. He was open. Low line drive punt goes out of bounds, and the Falcons will take over. We had 4.35 remaining here in the half, already on top, 20 to nothing. So a couple of first downs and the drive stalls for the Vikings. The way the Falcons are playing tonight, if they can uh, beat Capital Achievement next week, they'll roll into a Thanksgiving morning game with Ledger. Where yeah, is there a playoff could be, That could be could a, play be a playoff yeah. Huh. yeah, I think so. What do you need, top eight for the playoffs? Yeah. Both of those might be live. Both Ledger and Fitch could be live yeah. going into that game. Handoff Williams, and he's got six before he's even touched. Thomas Williams. Eight-yard gain for Williams. And again, Fitch going back to uh, what worked the first three possessions with the football. That's Williams straight up the gut. East Lime really no, not showing any offensive. There's no fear for Fitch offensively. No. So they can go back to the run here and just, you know, if they don't score this the remainder of the quarters, then so be it. Second and two. Second and two. Maddox in motion. Hand off Williams. Thomas Williams with another first down. Chains will move as he nears midfield. Thomas Williams. Clock under four minutes now. And Fitch content with the pace right now. Yeah. Apologize for calling Mike Ellis, Mike Emery. Hello. It happens. Another, another great ECC coach. No, it happens. First and ten at the 47-yard line. Perry under center, Maddox in motion. Let's call that BB in motion. Handoff straight up the middle, Williams. 
And yep. I saw the Viking defenders, Casey, that time creeping up closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. Like you talked about, five down linemen, three or four linebackers, shoot the gap, take your chance. You know, if he beats you, he's got six. You know, try and stop him at the point of attack. That wing play will be there soon. Yeah. They've pounded the middle now. Yeah, let's soften it up. Yeah, yeah get to the edge. They've gotten the linebackers pinching in, like you mentioned. Yeah. So that wing play will be there soon. It's Maddox's number on the wing. Second and six. Fitch just crossing over into East Lyme territory. Again, handoff Williams. Big hole off left tackle, and he gets another first down to the 40-yard line. Anglin with the stop saved a touchdown there because Williams was gone if he did not stop him. Yeah, Thomas Williams, he is uh, a pretty unique runner. Uh, we don't see a lot of guys like him. He's big but tall, uh, those big legs, yep. long legs, and uh, – it feels like he's running downhill the minute he gets yeah, the football. Yeah, he's not a low-based runner. He's, like I said, I talked about Eric Dickerson with that running style. Stand up right and just try and bring me down. Perry steps up, throws on the run, has a man, and it's caught right at the first down marker by Greaves. Perry throws a bullet, and the chains will move. The second pass attempt right now for Fitch tonight. Nice job that time by Benjamin Perry. Throwing a strike. Is that the NASCAR package I like <laughs> from Mike Ellis? Well, they're down inside the 30-yard line now at the 29 as the clock ticks under a minute 40, but they're trying to get in one more time here in the first half, already up on top 20 to nothing. In motion, Maddox. Perry's going to keep it himself, dancing towards the outside, gains a yard, popped. On the far side. Gallo on the stop, number 17 for East Lime, coming out of his linebacker position. Uh, so 17 is not Gallo. There you go. Gallo is, has moved. He is wearing number 59. Okay. And I believe that was Maxim, number 11, that made the pop for East Lime. Okay. And, and if it wasn't, it just was. All right. Timeout, Fitch Falcons. Thank you. This timeout is brought to you by C-Rack. Bringing light to mental health through opening doors and opening minds. Learn more at CRACCT.com. In your opinion, have we had a consistent year with the rosters and the numbers for football? Or? Um, I don't know what that means. Peter, have you, uh, do you think we've had a, a good year with rosters and numbers and matching things up? And I have not had a good year with rosters and numbers in the <laughs> last 14 years that I have <laughs> You don't know what that means, but Peter does, so <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> I don't know that I have. I can probably count on, on two hands the number of games I've been to where the roster is solid. 100% correct. <laughs> All righty. Second and 10, Falcons <laughs> from the 29 yard line of East Line. Handoff. Williams, and good job by the interior of the Viking line that time. They. 71. Dan Brothers on the stop. I don't sound bitter, do I? Yes. A little bit. Yeah, Dan, little Dan bit. Brothers. Listen, can I say bit. something about Dan Brothers? Yes. His, his father works at UPS with me. What about his brothers? His brothers is his brother was a brother. <laughs> his brother was a brother. His father Dan was a mother. Brothers. Yeah, his mother was a mother. <laughs> Third down. Perry from the pistol. Gonna throw. In the flat it goes. Complete first down. Shelton with the Put it on that the ball's out. They're saying Shelton fumbled before he hit the ground, and if he did, East Lime is going to have recovered it, and that'll be a big turnover for the – Yeah, yeah East Lime football, there you go. Yep. So the Falcons looked like they were heading in, already up 20 nothing. Shelton with a nice reception from Perry, and I thought the ground – I thought he was down. I'd like to see that again if we have instant replay. Maybe we'll see it on, on the highlights. I thought he was down. You have to stay tuned for the highlight package to see that one. Oh, a big turnover there for the East Lime defense. Well needed because Fitch was going in for six more. And, and getting the ball to start the yeah, second half. A little double down. Not anymore. So first and ten, and I think you know East Lime will be content getting to halftime at this point. Ball Ball's close out. and dangerous. Angle was tackled. Safety right there, Casey, huh? Maybe the one-yard line. 
Does Mike Ellis want to call timeout? He does. Yeah, why not? So, going back to the rosters for a moment, because <laughs> I've gotten used to it, and I think there's a certain amount, now that I've seen, you know, I have a, a freshman to my left here, and knowing the tumultuous nature of, of, <laughs> of high school football, I get why the rosters in football can be difficult. Yeah. I mean, there are weeks when you've got, for example, the fact that Mason Gallo is wearing 59 tonight sure, okay. is likely because 54 and 75 are out. Right. And he needed to switch over to play. Okay. A, you know. So uh, AJ's got some kids on bacon who have had to change numbers because they've changed positions. We saw that right. uh, with one of our players, Peter, we saw this year when you, he, you did the feature on when he changes positions, he has to change his number. That was uh, the kid from Ledger. Andrew Harris. Andrew Harris, 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 yeah, Harris, yeah. So, I mean, that to me – is understandable. There's a certain amount of roster movement right. that you have to get used to. What what frustrates me, like number 33 for NFA running down the sideline for 40 yards, and we don't have number 33 in the roster. Right. That's what frustrates me. <laughs> when there are guy, when you have guys that are not even on the roster, a little quarterback keeper by Angling to try to get some time out again. They got two left. I mean, yeah. might as well. well and it, when that stuff makes it into print, is the big problem. So right. you know, we go out and shoot yeah. all these photos yeah. at a game, and the name is wrong. And, and it's so much, it's Sean Elliott or myself or someone at the day getting the angry phone call from a parent saying like that was my kid not not whoever and I mean they don't want to hear it well they just they just want it right they just want it to be right and, and, and we want it to be right right and you're the and you know, ultimately it's on the you know you're the publication source but all right sports doctor and Peter Wappy here's your quiz less likely to know the accuracy of the roster. Less likely. Yeah. The head coach, the athletic director, or a random parent in the stands. Least least likely to know the accuracy of the roster. Ah, uh, the, the athletic director. Maybe. The head coach head might, coach, yeah. Yeah, head yeah. coach, you think so? They don't, right. care. They, they, they don't they're care. They're worrying about a lot of stuff. Right. They really don't care about. They don't care. They don't, Rudy they, Begos doesn't care if they got the know switched. If, they want to know that Will's playing. They yeah. don't care if he wears 12 or yeah. 112. They just want to know that he's healthy. They're worrying about a lot of other stuff. Right. You're, you have a better chance. You have a better chance with the athletic director uh, because they deal with the rosters a lot. And I promise you the random parent knows better than either of you. Either of those two. The random parent will be the one that goes, oh, no, Mikey wears 12 because they switched it up. All right, so they don't have three timeouts. They only have two timeouts left, so that will take you to halftime right there. I don't know why he burned those timeouts like that. Well, it is 20 to nothing, and the Falcons are going to go into halftime with a nice lead here on their home field as they angle towards a playoff berth in Class L. Uh, we will be back for some halftime action. Thank you. You've been watching Game Day live on theday.com. John is the one that has the big picture. He understands when things have to tighten down in practice. He understands when someone is not doing the right thing and they can do better than what they're doing. He's someone that just doesn't take care of himself. He takes care of a lot of other people that are out there. I mean, that just comes a part of being together. Like, we're all a family. And, like, I really stick by that. I got in close with a lot of guys. Even just this year, I've become a lot closer with everybody on the team. And, I don't know, I just feel connected to everybody. He makes my job easier because sometimes they hear me all the time. Uh, you know, going to try to tune me out, and then I try to get louder and louder. And the, but what John does is John comes from a player perspective. He'll let them know, hey, listen, you're not doing the job. Tough talks happen all the time, and they need to happen in order for us to all improve. I had a talk with a couple of the JV kids earlier in the week, actually, and we talked about they're not staying focused enough, and they need to be disciplined, and they need to, you know, be fully engaged in practice and not fool around. He brings someone else in their ear and now it's a peer that they respect and a peer that's not afraid to speak to them and be a true friend. I feel like when it comes from the coach, it's just like, oh, it's coach. Like he has to say that. But when it comes from somebody who's a teammate who's close to you, it's you see that it's like, oh, I actually need to change. My dad's the girls lacrosse coach and he started coaching right when like my sister started. He coached them all through youth, and I just saw how dedicated he was, how much time he spent putting into it, and I realized that 
like coaches give up a large portion of their lives just to see the kids, the students, and the athletes all just become better people, and they just want the best for us. I think it comes with him understanding the things that go on in the background of a program. What happens before practice? What happens in the locker room? And how all those things affect the team. And so I do think he probably gets that perspective, which is, uh, you know, being his age, is a very nice perspective to have and very important for us.
Your first Falcon, Martin Brown. Growing up, I actually played hockey a lot of the time, and I made the switch in fifth grade to football. And my first practice of uh, the conditioning week, coach split everyone up into positions, and I was kind of the last kid standing there, like I don't even know what position I play. And they only had one quarterback; they needed a backup. So my coach Mundell Rowan's dad actually just said, "Hey, just throw him with the quarterback." So I started on the B team, didn't do much that year, but uh, gradually got better. The last couple years I haven't been playing quarterback, I've been playing uh, more like uh, receiver and safety. Will had talked about that he wanted to give it a shot again, and I completely forgot about it because he's been receiver for the last few years. And when I went and saw uh, Will in the passing league, he just looked really good out there. I wasn't sure going into this year whether they are going to let me play both ways. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to play defense if I was playing quarterback or if I would be playing like a receiver and safety, but I'm, I'm glad they let me start playing both ways. He's my first quarterback that I've had that plays both ways. It's not something that I really like, but he's actually leading our team in tackles, so you, you got to have him out there. As a high school quarterback, you know, you got to take hits. You don't see a lot of high school quarterbacks sliding. And then playing defense, you just kind of get used to it. I mean, if you have a quarterback that never gets hit and then he takes one hit, they're usually getting injured. So if you have a quarterback that uh, has learned to take hits, knows the right way to take, um, yeah, it can be beneficial. Will, he's, he's that kind of kid, doesn't care about stats. He just wants to get the win. And uh, he's willing to go out there and be a lead blocker in any play. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they, they do that. They throw me out there, just trying to throw my, throw my shoulder out there, trying to just throw someone off balance, make a lane for our running backs. He's just a leader. He's a kid that the kids can rally behind. And he does just such a nice job of leading actually both offense and defense. He's the quarterback on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's just a natural born leader and he does a great job for us. If the Fitch Falcons are going to be successful this season, Elijah Shelton is going to be a big part of that success. Big not only because of his physical stature, but also for what he contributes to team chemistry. But it wasn't always that way. A sophomore year, quits halfway through the year just can't quite sustain and can't can't make it. Honestly, there's no excuse to why I quit. It was, to me, it feels like I just let them down here. Shelton says his complicated family situation got in the way. What happened, my father, big part of my immaturity and what's been going on, he showed up to the game and it threw me off mentally and I walked away that game, and I just never found the courage to come back and face what I did to them on the field because they ended up losing that game. He moved to East Lyme for his junior year, but returned to Fitch, moving in with his grandmother for his senior year. The biggest difference is diversity, and here I felt at home. Over there, I, I didn't really fit in. Leaves as a junior, comes back as a senior. And what has he done for us so far? Uh, he goes through, and when a situation goes haywire, he is the one that has the clear mind and makes the right decision and does the right action and tries to have other kids follow that action. Being on the field clears my mind. Those two years not having it was a dark spot. And coming back, my mind's been clear, been able to focus on school, have good grades, focus at home, be good at home. You know, since he's come back to us at Fitch, the thing that I've really noticed about him is the maturity. Yo, know, some of the things that have happened this year in the passing league and then here in the season so far, if it were the Eli of his sophomore year, he'd have a lot of trouble handling these situations. What I've found so far this year is he's the one that's trying to stop the chaos. He's the one that's trying to stop our other guys from getting in trouble. He's the one that is doing whatever he can to make sure that stop, stop, guys stop. stay here, they don't you know, go off the beaten path, and they're here for the team. It's not a lot of people are willing to speak up to certain people, and I'm, I will because we need to stay together as a team. As Coach says all the time, together or nothing. As long as we're together, we'll get what we want. And if we don't, then we won't get anything. Hopefully these younger, younger men and women can go through and see him, hey, listen, this is how you end up. This is where you need to be. 
we go through some rough patches, maybe when we're younger, but we've got to mature and we've got to get to this, this point. I uh, personally, it's been hard to see the growth in myself, but when others see it, especially Coach Ellis, when we've been through a lot and he's never really given up on me, it's hearing it come from him it means a lot. We're back at halftime, 20 to nothing, Fitch on top of East Lime. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Game Day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. At Waterford Dental Health, we provide solutions to all your dental needs. Visit us today at waterforddentalhealth.com, 177 Boston Post Road in Waterford. And by Core Plus Credit Union. Love the home you're in. Borrow based on the finished value of your home before your renovations begin. Apply today at coreplus.org. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, and uh, top to bottom, a dominant first half by the home Falcons. Yeah, 19 carries for 145 yards for Thomas Williams and a touchdown in the first half. And, you know, Fitch established the line of scrimmage, Casey, on both ends of the football. And you talk about domination and just pushing bodies around. And, uh, you know, and it, it, was, it was a simple recipe for some home cooking right there, just number eight up the gut for most of the first half. And, you know, for East Lyme on the offensive side, you know, just a couple of first downs, two first downs the entire first half, and just really couldn't get out of their own way on the offensive end of the football. Well, the ends of the Falcons, Porter and Shelton, are so mm. dynamic. Uh, they really make it difficult to do anything wide. Uh, they allow the, the middle of the line to bunch things up. And, you know, East Lyme really didn't show a lot uh, of offensive versatility. And we'll see what happens here to start the second half. The Falcons will have it first and right up the middle. A run back down to the 40-yard line. Greaves, number three. Took it to the 40, so Fitch will have good field position at the 40-yard line. And for the most part, you know, the Falcons, as you say, have been very simple, right? It's been, it's been Williams, the very occasional toss to uh, Maddox. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Perry will keep it himself once in a while. You know. Two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, he's kept it a couple times yeah, he when he's is. been on the goal line. Yeah, sure. But we saw him throw it to, I mean, they were driving. Probably should be up another touchdown. you got a kid who gets 19 carries in the first half. That's game plan. That's a workman like in Williams. It is, and he's. Uh, that's a lot of carries for a high school back. Maddox in motion, now back to the line of scrimmage, now back in motion again. Hand off to Williams, and he'll... Push the pile again. He's a, you know, I, I think I know uh, the nickname for number eight. I think he's Thomas the Tank Engine. I mean, that's, you know. Thomas the Tank. I don't know that he wants to be called that, but our younger viewers out there are going to be thrilled. But uh, he is just, he's, you know, he's a tank, but his, his engine never quits. Yeah, I mean, no, the kid just. Strong, north, just south. Always, always going, always moving. He's tough to bring down. And. He's got six on first down. Shelton will go wide right for the Falcons. And they've definitely found something with Perry as their, as their quarterback. Hand off again to Williams, and he spins out of a tackle. He's right to the stakes. Brought down, finally, by Brothers. Well, only by one of Brothers, only one guy. <laughs> by a Brothers is his last name, yeah. He wasn't brought down by two different people who happen to be related. Because <laughs> we have seen that this year as well. Yes, we have. <laughs> Mentioned his dad works for UPS. Brothers. Bro brother's father? Yes, brother's father, that's right. <laughs> or, they, as they call him, the father's the brother. Father's brother, yeah. Well, that would be uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In motion. Maddox, handoff, Williams, first down, easy. Pyle getting pushed back, but he'll be into East Lime territory. And really, I have a feeling this second half could be, you know, like Yawn City. Cause I think you're right. I think um, this is it. <laughs> I think you're going to see number eight get about 73 carries uh, for the game. He's at 22 carries right now. I would say the, the over for 40 carries is coming to play for number eight. And I, I think it's just keep it simple and try and stop our back. And uh, that's the whole game plan. Up 20 to nothing. They're Why not would you change in, it? They're not, they're not interested in popping one up 20 to nothing, no. unless it's him that pops one. Right. In motion. He's going to run a little option. Toss to Maddox on the outside. Maddox breaks tackle down the sideline. Big play for the Falcons. 30-yard line where he's whacked out of bounds. But Well, you, you talked about that in the first half. And, you know, Williams pound, 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 and then, you know, soften the edge with Maddox, and a nice job that time by Perry coming down the line of the option. 
and a big gain there over 20 yards. That's easy to fall asleep with number eight pounding you. And then when you get a guy on the edge, and again, a nice decision that time, Casey, by Perry coming down the line and fishing it to the outside. Well, the, the Falcons are not intricate or, you know, they're, they're not flashy. What they are is methodical uh, and, and, and well coached, and they execute in the simplest ways. First down. Handoff Williams, big hole rumbling, and he'll get down right near the first down marker. He's still churning. I'm telling you, Thomas the Tank Engine, he's got nine. You know, four more carries, 23 carries. The, you know, I don't want to say the best thing. You know, they started the year with BB as their quarterback. He got hurt, and probably the best thing that could have happened to them is they, they settled into Perry at quarterback, moved BB out to the wing, moved Maddox off the fullback spot to the wing because yes. he was also injured. Right. And Williams as that fullback He's guy. Emerged. And that's now the lineup, and this is their most effective offense we've seen this year. There's Maddox in motion. Option again with Perry. This time he'll keep it. First down and more. Straight up the middle. Ben Perry. Touchdown, Falcons. Third touchdown on the night for the sophomore, Ben Perry. 23 yards unofficially for Perry. On the option keeper, Casey took it up the gut that time, and he was untouched going in for six. 26-0, Falcons on top. That time, the sophomore quarterback earned that touchdown on his own. He mm -hmm. turned the Jets on once he got into the second level, and that was all she wrote. Kabuso will come in to kick the point. Swing gate again. High snap, and they're going to fake it, and wide open in the end zone is Shelton, and that was too easy. Two-point conversion is good, and that's something, you know, moving forward as they <laughs> head towards the postseason. Sneaky. That's, that's going to be available to them. Yeah. Uh, there was no one that thought Shelton was going to sneak into the pattern. Well, that was a good play. That was that was impressive. Mike Ellis has got a little, little pep in his step down there, too. They Leading are, the charge. Look at him. They are playing Geek. with pizzazz. They are, yeah. You've got to be happy with this team's performance tonight. Jeez, up 28 nothing against a, a game East Lime team coming in. Yeah, I mean, if you look at East Lime, they, uh, you know, they, got, they beat up on Montville on the first game of the season, and then they had two really tough opponents in Killingly and NFA, and they lost, you know, they got beat up by Killingly, but they lost a real close one to NFA, a game they probably should have won. Then they go and they lose back-to-back -back games. They get a forfeit win. Yeah. But then they lose back-to-back -back games against Guilford and Daniel Hand, two really good teams. Right. They rebound really nicely with wins over Woodstock and New London. If you look at their schedule, who's the, other than Montville opening game, Who's the gimme on that schedule? They don't, they're not. No. Every week they've played a good team. So I, I was expecting a little more, but I think it might be just a testament to how, how Fitch has continued to get better. Uh, and that, like you said, once they escaped Fairfield County, 37-27 and 42 nothing against Fairfield Prep and New Fairfield. But they beat everybody in front of them. They, they beat everybody in the league. And then Stratford and NFA the last two right. weeks. <coughs> Squib kick, Vikings will fall on it. They'll have field position their own 38. But, I mean, look at Fitch's wins. Stonington's a good win. New London's a good win. Stratford's a good win. NFA's a good win. The only win they have against this under 500 team, I mean, bacon. is Bacon. Um, sorry. Five and two. Yeah, the. <laughs> sorry, AJ. Got the, starting, the starting guard for the Bacon <laughs> Academy Bobcats sitting to my left. He well, you know sneer. what? He give you a little sneer. He well, he you know he's talked about. He's I've asked him about this Fitch team and what's you know fancy or special about them, and it's not it's nothing. No, they just execute. They, you know they execute everything. Handoff. Mundell finally got a little bit of room. His first positive carry on the day. He gets six on first down for the Vikes. You know the reason why Ledger and Fitch when they're good. Is they're not? It's not that they're fancy. It's that they have good athletes running a very simple right. thing, but they execute so well. Yep. You know, don't mistake this football for being unathletic just because it's not spread. And no, yeah, the ball no, no doubt. 
Well, we talked about this. It's a precision offense. It's not a, it's not a gimmick offense. The, the wing is a precision offense. Second and four. Anglin, toss left. Mundell cuts it back up the middle, and I think he'll roll he'll over his guy. I think he yeah. rolled on the backs of, of, uh, of the tackler, and he'll move the chains and cross midfield. Now, think about that. That's the third first down of the night for East Lime. That's crazy. Yeah, for an East Lime who... You know, last week, granted only 12 points, but they've been averaging, you know, three, four touchdowns a game. Right. That's a third first down. That's exactly right. That's a pretty dominant effort from the Fitch defense. Anglin wants to throw. Deep ball. In the air, jump ball, and I think it's going to be intercepted. It's a jump ball. They're both fighting for it. Who the officials say? Yep, yeah. intercepted. Cabuso went up and took it away. Falcons will take over. Cabuso went up and outfought Gillespie. Ethan Gillespie went up and they both had it, but Cabuso came down with it and the Falcons will take over. Congratulations to the East Lime girls volleyball team. They advanced with a win over number 14 Brookfield in the second round of the volleyball. And uh, the Fitch Falcons in North Haven is we are waiting for that score. Well, almost like a punt. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. just talked about getting some first, first downs. downs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not a lot cooking tonight for the Vikings, that's for sure. Hand off Williams straight up the middle. Big hole, first down. Thomas Williams up to the 40-yard line. Yeah, the one thing about Williams, too, is he hasn't put the ball on the turf yet tonight either, Case. He's carried about 25 times and getting close to 200 yard night, and he has not put the ball on the turf. He's held on to the rock, as they would say. First and 10 Falcons at their own 39 yard line. Clock now, 6.45 remaining here in the so third period. So this is the the lineup, this is what you're going to see now from Fitch moving forward for these next two or three weeks that could possibly push them into a state tournament for it. Opson right, toss to Maddox, and a nice play on the edge. Great tackle made on the edge by Nick Maxim of the Vikings. Maxim came up, stepped up from his cornerback safety position, a good tackle on the outside. But this is, like you said, you talked about this version of the Fitch Falcons. This is what you're going to see down the stretch of the season. You know, for Mike Ellis, and like you said, there, there could be something on the line on Thanksgiving Day when they take on the legend Colonels. And if I'm a coach in, in Class L and I'm, I'm watching the Falcons, I'm impressed by their physicality and toughness, and I'm looking at number eight saying, mm. okay, that's going to be something we need to look at. Little jump on the right side of the line. I think that's the first penalty we've seen on Fitch offensively. Is that correct? That is. And that's another thing. They played a clean game. They have played a clean football game. No turnovers, right, for Fitch? None? Yes, they turned it over on the fumble. That's right. Okay. Yep. Going in for a touchdown on the other side. But, I mean, one penalty on the offense. Uh, on a, on a, you know, when you run the ball as much as they do, no holds. No holds. No, nobody's jumping. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. So that's well executed. That's something to talk to Coach Ellis about. Yeah. You know, is uh, you know, because you mentioned this this version, right? So yeah. You know, this version seems to be running a pretty tight offense for him. Perry to throw doesn't like it. Now instead steps up and throws incomplete. And he kind of wasn't sure what he wanted to do. He was looking for BB and he couldn't find him. I think he I wanted to hitch and go there for a bit. I think he wanted to run, and then he—I think he wanted to throw. It was—it was broken, and he decided he wanted to run. And he saw BB, and was like, "No, I can't throw it." He, yeah. <laughs> he had a little double hitch and go there or something. I don't know. I think your turn. I think you're making it out as if that was a designed play. I think that was just a broken. Okay, play. all right. Third and fourteen. So and no 35. chance of the hitch and go. The receiver going down the field. Thirty no, they, yard. They could. Yeah. They could run that. Right. right. It looked out of sorts. As you would say. Yes. Third down. Perry drops, throws, deep ball in the air, and it's caught and dropped. Caught and dropped by Aiden Greaves. Hey, Aiden. Hey, lad, you had both hands on the ball. 
but incomplete as he went to the turf, and it will be a punting situation for the Falcons. <laughs> Defender, Sorry. Well, I'm getting a look from the... <laughs> you get a look from everybody in the booth. Hey. <laughs> nice punt. Caught at the 33-yard line and downed almost immediately. But I, I have to give Mundell credit. Mundell. He you hung know. in there. Oh, just catching the, just yeah. catching the punt in a, and then looking to return it is again something we don't, <laughs> we don't we see never it. Never see, see it, no. Now I think I have a theory about that too. By the way, yeah. Do you like my theory, Peter Wappy? The numbers in football have changed to where special teams are not as. So you're like Mundell. He's got to take all the reps in practice as a running back and a defense and a and a cornerback. When does he get a chance to do punt return reps? Yeah. Like I don't know that you do. No. So the the art of the of catching it and, and fair catching and all that. I don't know that they take a lot of time, so they put him back there and they say let it bounce. Straight up the middle, Mundell biggest run of the game uh close good for about 7. No. That's my theory. I think it's also one of those risk reward things where no you, you muff that punt and, and drop it and turn it over. Second and three. If you, if, you're, if you don't have the utmost confidence that the guy is going to make a clean play on it, you'd, you'd rather just let it bounce and trust the ball to your offense. And I think that's true, but I think if your punt returner had 50 reps, you'd feel more confident with their ability to catch the ball. I think part of it is there's no time for that. I mean, really, on, on you're, you're practicing punts. You're, but most of the guys are having a punter go punt it a few times. Kicker, same thing. I don't think a punt returner gets a lot of practice when he's playing both sides of the ball. Now, maybe if you had a kid... You know, you can afford to do that, but I don't think Mundell's getting any reps catching punts. Yeah, from the practices that I've attended, they have them back there catching punts, but not not catching them at game speed with gunners coming at you. And and that's a big difference. And I don't know that you can do it. I mean, you're, you're trying to get... No, I, I know there's not enough time in, the, in a practice to do all the things they want to do. Third down and four. Toss, Mundell... Cuts it back inside and nice pursuit. Falcons fly yeah, into the football. Just, just too many Falcons in pursuit. Point of attack. Mundell trying to do what he can to cut back and just nowhere to go. That play is designed to go to the outside. It's not well blocked on the outside. Mundell doing everything he could, Casey, to put his head down and get a couple yards in another fourth down situation. Why not go for it? Luthi, Portillo, Ambrose. Yeah, flying oh, to the football. I mean, they just, you had linemen, weak side coming up, linebackers. I mean, they were all heading hats to the ball. Fourth and two. A triple stack for the Vikings, and they're not going to get it. We've seen this before on fourth and one, fourth and two. You're just not going to run it up the gut and get two yards against the pitch on fourth down. They've run off right tackle yeah. four, three times with Mundell and he's gotten minus three yards on those three carries. Yeah. So You've got to do something jet sweep, come across the formation, and show them a little different look. It's just hat on hat football tonight for East Lime against Fitch is not going to work. Falcons will take over on downs. 3.05 remaining here in the third period. 28 nothing Fitch on top. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Casey O'Neill and the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. And we'll have to try to let you know what we're doing the rest of the football season figure it out first down Perry under center in motion Maddox Perry fakes the handoff throws and had his man BB I was there incomplete he also had Greaves running straight down the middle of the field that was a little more intricate play yeah as it looked like it was going to be that option to the right and instead he, you know, he drops into the into pass pattern out of uh, out of the option look. If he could have dumped that in BB's bread basket, that was six points. He was that open. You see Fitch, though, kind of expanding the offense here in what's possible. Tinkering? Well, Tinkering, trying different things? Yeah, but they're, they're showing mm. that the, the double wing and the option has a lot of permutations to it, but it all starts with what this play is going to be. Motion, Maddox. Motion, motion again. Hand off Williams. And Williams gets eight, you know, eight yards. Yeah. If you can do that, 
a lot, then it allows all those going to pass plays, yeah. Well, oh, that's the bread and butter, though. The bread and butter is eight, and it's kind of it sets everything else up in the playbook for Fitch. It sets the play up in the edge of the Maddox, sets up the passing game, you know, with, with, with all the receivers out there. That's the biscuit. Yeah, it is. It is. Williams it's is the bread and butter. Yeah, Maddox everything is the biscuit. Else, the biscuit. Yeah, you know, you can't have, you can't eat a lot of them. Right. But when you get them, they're delicious. Yes. Now I want biscuits. The biscuits. Hot chocolate. They got cold quick. Biscuits and gravy, maybe. I can eat a lot of biscuits. Yeah. I, I can. You know what? I can see you putting away <laughs> biscuits, Pete. I, I can see that. Third and three. For the Falcons, Maddox in motion. Handoff Williams and Thomas the tank engine still on his feet and he is gone. T dub into the end zone. The little engine that could just kept on going and the Falcons pouring it on here at home. 35 yards on that touchdown run by Williams. That's his fourth touchdown of the night, I do believe. So 34 yard touchdown run, a 35 yard touchdown run. Add him up. It's Perry's got three. Perry, I'm sorry. He's Perry's got two. He's got two. You're right. I'm sorry. So both his touchdown runs, 34 and 35 yards. We've seen him dinking and dunking all night. But when he gets for six, he pops it. That's because every time he gets close, Perry takes it in for the touchdown. <laughs> it's true. Second touchdown of the night. 34 and nothing. Cabuso will come in to kick the extra point for the Falcons with 158 remaining in the third period. A dominant effort tonight here by Fitch. Good snap, good hold, good kick. 35 nothing. Falcons on top, 158 remaining here in the third period. 26 carries for 224 yards. Thank you, Mike Tomorrow. Hey, would you call him the Aaron Andrews of game day? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I believe... Did you not call him that? I, I, well, I think, I think they're both, uh, both <laughs> very good looking. Uh, both yep. very good looking, but I think she knows a little more. <laughs> she might. 26 carries, 224 yards, and two touchdowns. But what I will say about Mike DeMora. He's, he's grinding it out down there, too. It is, it is, is that below 45 he, degrees, and he's on the sideline. He must, he must walk. I mean, he lives between those 20-yard lines. He's hash to hash, tomorrow back and forth. <laughs> I, want him to, I want to put a Fitbit on him and see how many steps he gets on a... <laughs> Mike I think Mike is, is, uh, likes the biscuits, too. I do. I think Mike likes the biscuits. But here's a funny thing. I was told a long time ago that, and Mike DeMar is living proof of this, you can get into any venue with a confident walk and a notepad. <laughs> Clipboards also help as well. <laughs> as I'm walking in tonight, the woman at the, fr at the gate, I said, I'm with uh, the day. And she said, there's already one of you here. Yeah, that I was went, me. I said, well, there's, a, there's more than a, There's actually quite a few of us. <laughs> I think she's thinking, but you're the newspaper. Why does there need to be more than one of you? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. There's a whole crew of us here for game day. Squib kick, and oh, what a hit laid by Greaves. Mm. Greaves just popped East Limes. What number is that, 47? Uh, lunch pail and all that of time. Course, like of course, we don't have a 47 no, on the there roster, you go. Peter Wapi. brothers. So be brothers. So, Peter Wapi, we don't have a 47 <laughs> on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> the aforementioned roster issues. Uh, nope, sports doctor. Mr. and Mrs. 47 can call me tomorrow. Yeah, there you go win. then. All right. They may not want to see the replay of that one no. anyway, although their son hung in there and popped right up. Clock is running. Yeah, running clock, 35 points. East Lime fakes the handoff to Mundell. Anglin complete. A nice gain. Good pitch and catch that time. Patterson with the reception for England's best throw of the night right there. Like I said, you saw him making throws in uh, you know in warm-ups. We'll can throw the football. Yeah, he that has his best throw of the night. Yeah, strong arm. Could throw it again, pressured, and down he goes at midfield. No real chance that time. Skyler Noland with the sack for the Falcons. He lost about five yards there. You go from 
second and two to third and seven. Anglin pressured off the corner. Escapes, rolls to his left, gonna keep it being chased by Shelton. And Shelton collar. grabs him up high by the back of the jersey and it'll be shy of the first down. It'll bring up fourth in about six as we're heading towards the end of the third period. I look closer than that. Fourth and one. No, they the first down. Fourth and one. They said he yeah. stayed, stayed in bounds up closer, so they're marking it at the 45. Well, here you go, sports hey, doctor. Fourth with, and one. Hey, you're running with Mundell up the gut? No. Hope not. I think they're going to let the clock run out. Yeah. And this time, a much better situation. They only have to go about five yards on the other side. So that'll take us to the end of the third period. 35 nothing. Falcons dominating. Can they pitch the shutout? Join us for fourth quarter action. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Tips from C-Rack to help you grow your mental wellness. Get seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Avoid screen time and large meals before bed. Try new activities and meet new people. Find a career or volunteer for a cause that fits your values. Get outside and change your scenery. Challenge your mind through games, books, or activities. Stick to a weekly budget. Take time to process your emotions through meditation. And write down your thoughts in a journal to help organize your feelings. To learn more about how to improve your mental wellness, visit CRACCT.org. At The Day, our journalists are in your community, talking with business owners, attending town meetings, analyzing data, talking to government leaders, reporting on the issues that matter most to you. Since 1881, we have been serving our community and will continue to do so seven days a week, 365 days a year. Never miss a day of news. Enjoy convenient home delivery right to your doorstep, seven days a week. Subscribe at theday.com slash membership. We're back. Fourth quarter action to begin here at Fitch High School. Fourth and one for the Vikings. Toss left, Mundell, and he may have gotten the first down. He broke the tackle. Mundell of Kilgore. Uh, Mundell got that himself. Wide receiver on the outside. Kind of whiffed on the block. Gillespie. Ethan Gillespie. And Mundell kind of stuck his head down and got two yards the hard way. Kilgore had him. Mm. Uh, but that's just too much to ask, I think. Mundell, quickness, you know? That little quick guy, yeah, tough, yeah. strong. So first down, Vikes. Anglin to throw. On the run, he throws an incomplete. And Patterson, the intended receiver. Incomplete pass. Um, in your estimation, how much how much more prepared would the Eastland basketball team be this year with having me coach them in the summer league? Well, off the cuff. I mean, after, off the cuff. After they overcome the great disappointment of having to play for Coach Bernardi <laughs> and not you. Yeah, right. <laughs> after they, I mean, they're going to need some, some, some counseling sessions for that. But once <laughs> that's done, a little hitch and go, but Anglin at any time, but he's got some room to run. Heads to the other side of the field and tripped up at the 30-yard line. First down, nice job, Will Anglin, keeping it himself. You know, we, 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 nice job there by Anglin, talking and running, Casey, but I think basketball is going to be pretty decent this year in the league. I, I think the league's going to be all right. Yeah. St. Bernard's going to be very good. I yeah. think uh, like Ledger's going to be good. I think uh, Waterford's going to be competitive. I think Jeff will be all right. East will be all right. NFA will be competitive. I think New London will be competitive. I think it's going to be a good, going to be a good league. Griswold, Stonington. Oh, there's a nice pass in the flat. Mundell down the sidelines. Can he get there? Just shy. Knocked out of the bounds. Inside the five. Little flat pass that you've been looking for to Mundell, and he almost got to six. Yeah, just get row in space and let him make it happen. That time, number two. Almost got six. Down the sidelines. He's got the speed, Casey. You just got to get him a little bit of wiggle room out there. Inside of 10 minutes, 35 nothing, Fitch. East Lime trying to get on the board. He's out of bounds at the three. So first and goal, Vikings from the three-yard line. And don't run the ball up the middle here. Get to the edge. Handoff, Mundell off left tackle, and that's bottled up quickly. Maybe a yard to the two, nothing more. How about that little toss sweep, little jet sweep? These guys moving in motion a little bit. That would be very hard for them to punch it in up the gut. 
Clock's going to be down around nine minutes by the time they get this snap off. It's mm. down at 9-10. So, I mean, down 35 nothing. It's really about this score right here. Right. East Lyme trying to you know, have something positive off of this drive. Right inside of nine minutes. Anglin keeps it himself, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. Will Anglin, the senior, gets the Vikings on the board. I think Will Anglin probably called his own number there. Got to the line of scrimmage and saw something up front that he liked. Casey, like you said, nobody covering the nose guard, nobody covering the, uh, the center. Called his own number and found the end zone for six. Now, was that a uh, was that a foghorn, an air <laughs> it was horn? Something, man. It what was exactly was that? Uh, is there an evacuation horn, <laughs> a hurricane, I mean, something? Uh, ooh. Oh, boy. 8.56, and the Vikes will go for two. Anglin. Toss left, Mundell. Cuts it back inside, dives inside, and the two points are good. Rowan Mundell. <laughs> two points for number two, and there is that egregious sound again. <laughs> that, now, that's a uh, horn after being down. That's a 35 to nothing horn right there. <laughs> what would happen if they would like if they won a game? Or if it was like an <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. extra point for the win to win it or yeah. something? 8.56 uh, remaining in the ball game. 35 to 8 Falcons on top. Engine, siren or something. You know what the worst part about that score was? Ah, uh, it's, it's not a running clock anymore. Not a running anymore. clock anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown to, I've, I've, yeah, I've you, grown you, to appreciate the running clock. Yes, you have. You got to work tomorrow or you off? I am working tomorrow. Oh, come on. Stop it. Make a four-day weekend out of it. I No. I don't, What's your problem? I am, uh, you know, I, I've got to run things. got to run the show. i got to, you know, put the work in. You know, people like you, sports doctor. <laughs> Served our country so that <laughs> yeah. people like me could go to work tomorrow. I, I work for double time and a half today. Hey, hey, hey. Smile on my face. You know who we have not talked about yet? Uh, who's that? Notre Dame football. Uh, yeah, that was actually a, one of the surprisingly big wins over Navy. They don't usually beat Navy by that badly. They beat them up pretty good. They did, they did. And that North, Carol that North Carolina win looks better and better. Yes, North it Carolina does. is not bad. Yeah, North Carolina beat Wake Forest last week. Yeah, that was awful. And oh, good down night. the sideline. Can he hold on? No, almost to the 10 yard line. Kevin R Saintville Ravix got Off the, the onside, onside kick. kick and went the other way. He said, I, want, I got a chance to take this thing into the house. Mm. But the Falcons, just like that, will be right inside first and goal. If, did they mark him inside the 10 or outside the 10? Sure. They marked him outside the 10. He'll be marked at the 12. So first and 10, Fitch at the 12-yard line. Or maybe call it the 13. Perry, handoff. Williams, he's tripped up after a nice gain. Bring up second and probably seven. Yeah, Mike Ellis got the memo on the running clock, and he's going to try to take care of you in this drive. East Lime in field hockey, defeated by number two, Weathersfield, 2 nothing. So Stonington, the number two seed in Class S, advances. East Lime, the 10 seed in Class M, has been eliminated by Weathersfield. Second and five in motion. Handoff, Williams, off left tackle, big hole down to the marker, and it'll be close third and probably half a foot. Be first and goal. They said first and yeah, goal. Yeah, first right. and goal. Give him the first. first down inside the three yard line, yeah. Clock running with under eight minutes remaining. It'll be first and goal, Fitch at the two yard line. First and goal. We could talk a little bit about the Irish after, in between possessions. The whole landscape of college football a little bit with the yes. new, new playoff poll coming out. Which, ha there's one which has no sense. At yeah, all. I, we'll, we'll get into that. None. Yep. Perry will let the clock run down a little bit. And two uh, men in motion, so we're going to get, they're going to reset. That's a flag. Oh. No, they can reset. 
Handoff, Williams, and he will waltz into the end zone. Thomas, the tank engine, Williams, puts the Falcons on top 41-8. to eight. So three touchdowns for Perry, now three for Williams. So they answer the Vikings touchdown with a touchdown of their own. And Cabuso will come in for the extra point for the Falcons out of the hold of Beebe. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And it is through 42 to eight. Falcons on top. All right, sports doctor. College football playoff. Yeah. Breakdown. How is Michigan State? <laughs> at behind Michigan? Behind Michigan. They lost to them head when, to head. When yeah. they both have one loss, yeah. and Michigan's loss is to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a very, very mind, it's mind boggling some of the stuff that they come up with. Number one is, you know, is obviously uh, Georgia. Yes. Uh, and after that, anybody's, I think you could flip them around. Yeah. Ohio State still, you know, that loss to Oregon doesn't look so bad because right. it was early in the year and Oregon's right there. Right. But how does Oregon lose to Stanford and still be hanging around where they are? Hanging around. When you got undefeated Oklahoma, I get that Cincinnati doesn't get any respect. Right. But Cincinnati's well, win over Notre Dame is as good a win. And right. At Notre Dame is as good a win as any right. of those teams have. And, and Oklahoma's played well. They made that switch at quarterback, Casey, and they're flying right they now. They got Spencer Ralliff out of there. Yeah, they I mean... That kid's a stud. But I mean, how do you have undefeated Oklahoma, undefeated Cincinnati on the outside looking in? Alabama loses a game. I mean, they'll, I get they it. They lost to Texas A&M. I get it. Yeah. They're always, they're, they're trying yeah. to get the four best teams. And there's no right. way you can tell me Alabama is not one of the four best teams. Right. But if that's the case, then why are we playing these games? Yeah, that's correct. Because you, if you lose to an unranked team, you shouldn't be in the top four when there's undefeated teams hanging around. So expand the playoffs. Who is, who is the odd team out? Who, who, who is the team that most right now likely – Michigan State. Well, that most – I don't think they're that good either, though. I mean, they're okay. You think they're that Oak, good? Right now, Oklahoma's outside looking in. Okay, Cincinnati's no. outside looking in. Think Cincinnati's that good? Beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame. Handily, by the way. Yeah. That kicks on the turf, and the Vikings will cover it at the 35. Uh, do you like what Notre Dame is doing with the quarterback situation? You mean the three, the two, well, really the two-headed two monster? Headed two, yeah. yeah, because Cone is a fifth-year transfer guy. He's not, you know, he's not leading them. He can throw it. It's going to be Buckner and Pine next year, is it not? Yeah, Buckner's their running guy, so yeah. they've been bringing in. I like that they bring in Buckner with the freshman running back as yeah. well. and They're starting to integrate some of the kids who are going to be important next year. But Cone is still sort of the veteran. They're not ready to turn it over to the no, freshman yet. No, no. Uh, I don't know if Buckner can throw it enough to really, you know, that we have to see what how he's like. They like Pine a little bit, too. Hey, why not? You know, you can throw it a little bit. Anglin rolls right. Avoids pressure. Continues to roll right. Throws back across his body. Has a man complete. Up towards the first down marker. It goes to Patterson. Patterson. I get cold here, too. It was a beautiful day today. These nights get chilly. So as of November 9th, the committee rankings is number one, Georgia, number two, Alabama, number yeah. three, Oregon, and number, yeah, number four, four, Ohio State. State. Yeah. Here's the problem. How is Alabama? I mean, so what is that loss? The loss means nothing? You can Texas A&M? Yeah, just means nothing. No, it doesn't matter. No. Anglet, hitch and go, throws it out into the flat, complete, and close to the first down. It'll be again to Patterson. You know, Cincinnati and Oklahoma are at six and seven. And yeah. that's, that's too low. And I got news for you. You know who's, a real, who's not a good coach? Jim Harbaugh. Have they, <laughs> that's have they, that's has, a news surprise has he ever, has there, have they ever No, been, he's has, never won a big game Has there ever been a big career. game he couldn't fold tents on? Yeah. Anglin's going to keep it himself. He's going to have the first down as he crosses the 40-yard line. 35 before he's finally... Pushed back, but a first down. Do you not see enough of Jim Harbaugh in the NFL? Do you not see enough of him? Like you said, not coach Michigan the big wins. I, I, I think he's overrated. All I, uh, while Mike Demoro's here, all you need to know about the hiring of Jim Mora for the uh, UConn football job was that Keith assumed it was the father. <laughs> Playoffs. <laughs> He couldn't figure out why anyone anyone under the age of 60 who was alive would want that job. 
<laughs> Five and a half minutes, 42 to eight. Mike, nod your head. Is that a good hire? Mike says it's a good hire. I got news for you. Anyone with, they got a guy who coached in the NFL and coached at a Pac-10 school and got two bowl wins. They're lucky they could get someone who has a pulse. <laughs> you have your luck on the Huskies. Oh, I can't, listen. I, I expend too much energy caring about this. But I, the, what, the status of the UConn football program probably irritates me more, because I'm, I'm not a UConn guy, and it irritates me this much. Like, if I were a UConn guy, it would probably drive me crazy. But I mean, they, the fact that, they, that that program is where it is right now. Skip Holtz coach here, you know. Lou Holtz. I wasn't Lou Holtz? No, I wasn't <laughs> no, Lou Holtz. No, Lou Holtz. Oh, okay. Somebody. East Lions something cooking here, looking to get back on the board. Mundell. Big hole, he's off to the races, and this time he dives toward the end zone. Touchdown, Rowan Mundell. And the Vikings at least showing a little bit of heart here on offense with back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. Atta boy, Ro, is my guy. One of my basketball guys, Rowan Mundell. Up the gut for six. Hey, sports doctor, I, there's going to be kids all over Eastern Connecticut disappointed that they're not your guy. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, yeah, oh my guys, he's, he's, he's one of them. You're going to go to New London? They're going to say, all right, sports doctor. Oh, I got to. So when we were there for basketball, for volleyball, I didn't say this after. I'll tell you after this two-point mm. conversion here attempt by. Toss left, heading to the pylon, and in for the extra point. The two-point conversion is Patterson. And so that'll get the Vikings up to 16, 42-16 here with 4.42 remaining. So <laughs> Sean Raymond, the basketball player for New yeah. London, comes up to me and uh, he said, you like the new gym? I said, I love the new gym. It's fabulous. He goes, does that mean you guys are going to do a game they here this show year? up, yeah. And I said, we did your games last year. He goes, yeah, but you guys never came here. I said, that's just, you know, circumstances. I said, yeah. you know, we don't control a away and home. I said, but uh, I said, yeah. I said, I think the, the new gym is a – is worth seeing, and absolutely. I said, so you know, you do your job and don't stink. <laughs> there you go. So I, I need to put an addendum on that, Casey. So I, I think I heard that from three or four different people. Like, oh, you guys don't come on. So we are going to do every New London road game this year. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I heard from Chop? You don't know nothing about volleyball. What are you doing here? You don't know volleyball. That's true. That's why. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, that's you're, why. You're, that's why you're, Madison Canastrari was sitting yeah, next to you. Yeah, good. You're, 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 you're right, job. I know the more about volleyball than you, sports. Oh, doctor. I don't know nothing about. And I know, and I still don't know nearly enough to have not have Madison Canastrari sitting next to me. So that was, you know, the twelve guys in the field, flag, count them. Bigger question, sports doctor, is why you're not hanging out on the beach volleyball circuit. Yeah. I gotta be doing more. I'm a little stagnant right now. I'm gonna try and change that. Ah, uh, winter's coming up. Get over to the get over to the sandbox and yeah. little pooch kick taken by the Falcons and falling on it at the 35 yard line. So 439 remaining, 42 16. Uh, the Falcons have given up a couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter to East Lime. And I'll start playing basketball on Tuesday and Thursday nights over in Salem. I, I if, with my if, neighbor. If I was physically able. Yeah. To even waddle up and down a court. No, I would show. Right. I would right. show. I would show up there just to guard you. <laughs> I'm an easy guard now. I'm gonna be a hang out on the three-point line. That's it. Going inside. You have a Wally Zerbiak dive to the corner and just throw me to rock. I'd make you work too on defense. I'd run <laughs> no. around. I'd run around all over. Uh, you know what my defense is called right now? Olay. Yeah. That's it. The problem is, is I'm not physically capable Olé. of running up and down the court. I can't uh, even power walk. I, I can't even power walk up and down the court. I would. Yeah, my neighbor is Steve Kreft, and he like. Big water skis, like it's nobody's business professionally, and slalom skis. He's running three miles a day. He says, hey, Keith, let's start playing basketball during a week. I'm like, what? Hand off, Williams, rumbles, and ripped to the ground after a gain of six. I, I had to look at the flyer because the flyer said 21 and over. I thought it was 51 and over. That's you, said, was, you, should be look, you, should be lo you should be looking for a 50 and over basketball league. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the flyer. I'm like, well, if it's 15 <laughs> over, I'm going to be okay with this. Yeah, tw yeah but 21 and 20 over. You're going to yes. get kids that play at Mitchell on, uh, on a Tuesday night and come over and play with you the next night. 30 carries. 30 carries, 245 yards. Yeah, I do feel like I've said his name an awful lot. <laughs> yeah. and I don't think I've said anything but five-yard gain attached to it, too. I mean, it's been... I need a couple Long was he had 34 and a 35 yard touchdown run? So, but I am, I don't think they've stopped them for less than five yards. No, you know, maybe once in all night long. Under four minutes, and they're just gonna milk the clock, yeah, and take their time. 
And hand goes up in the back like it is now, and you snap the football. Hand off Williams. And you know what? Give the kid credit. He could have bounced that outside and maybe gotten more yards. He stayed right true to form on the hash. Yep. Ten Move yards the up the gut. Move the chains. Crosses into East Lime territory and first down Falcons. This clock can't go by fast enough, I think, for Fitch, East Lime, the fans. It's cold now. Boy. Yep, I'll tell you, I have come to appreciate the running clock. Love me a running clock. I think as soon as it got below 40 degrees, Mike DeMauro came up to the booth, too. <laughs> First down, Falcons, clock ticking 3.05, and they are waiting for that official's hand to go up. There it goes, and they'll run a play. That is smart football. Handoff, Williams, up the middle, off right tackle, six yards. You know, Peter Wappy, what I think I, we should have done maybe uh, half an hour ago is just had you run that clip in, a, in some kind of loop. Uh, sadly, the Falcons of, of Fitch Volleyball have been knocked off by North Haven. A uh, good friend of mine, Miranda Cahill's daughter, was a second team All-ECC, uh, honorable mention All-ECC, played for that Falcons yeah. volleyball team. Yep. A, lot of, a lot of familiar names. 230 and counting, 42-16 Falcons, and they'll have it second and four. Yeah, if we could have just put in Williams off the middle, six-yard gain on, yeah. a, on a loop, I could have I could have gone home an hour, an hour ago. Well, I think all in all, Mike is Ellis is going to be pretty proud of his team's performance tonight. Except for that false start right there. I had jinxed him. Second penalty the night for Fitch. You know, but all in all, Casey, if you talk to him coming in, this is his type of football game. Running the football, ball control, limited penalties, only one turnover on the fumble going in. You know, I, I, I think he got a good crisp game out of his team tonight. I don't think they have a lot of depth. But this group that he has, the 22 on mm. offense and defense, right now playing very good and mm. solid football. He's got a guy like Shelton who it can really be a force on both sides yeah. of the ball. You know, the defense flies to the football. Williams is, is a special guy right now in that backfield. You know, Malachi Maddox, who's in motion right now. Handoff, Williams, big hole, bounces off a defender, still on his feet. Ripping forward, he's not giving up anytime no. soon. And he crosses the 40, first down, Falcons. Another 10 yards there. Something out of nothing, like you said, getting hit, getting popped, gets another 10. Now, if I were Coach Ellis, I don't know why. That'd be, that would have been his last carry. I would have. 30, 33 carries, is that in, Mike, for 270? That three looks like a, an egg or something like that, Mike. is just chicken scratch. 33 carries, 270 yards for Williams tonight. So as we are starting to think about the Waterford Dental Health player of the game, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to head hey, down. Listen, I'm going to head about, down after about, this play. How about I had three? How about I have three touchdown uh, touchdowns on the day and completed all my passes, and I can't become the Waterford Dental Health player? Ben, ben Perry's going to win. Good thing he was earlier in the year. He was the Waterford Dental Health player of the game. There's Perry taking a I'm knee. Gonna, I'm going to head down now and beat the rush. Good win tonight for Mike Ellis. So uh, Peter Wappy, what's next for us on game day? So we're going to take next week off from live streaming um, so I can get out and cover some of the state playoff games, soccer slash field hockey. Um, the possibility of a Ledyard Stonington Class M soccer final is still in the, in the cards. Um, so that would be fun to go out and see. I don't think we would be able to uh, get the rights to broadcast that. And that means of any kind, right? So we don't have the ability to do anything with that? Uh, we, I can go and do highlights for it. Okay. So, yeah, if that happens, I will certainly be there. A um, couple interesting semifinals along the way. Um, in, in volleyball, Waterford and Ledyard playing each other tomorrow night. That'll be fun. Uh, a lot of teams alive still. Uh, in Class M, you know, in, you know, Stonington is going to be playing Bacon. Like we said, Ledger's still alive. Uh, Fitch in Class L with a big win over Middletown still alive. Uh, Stonington still alive in, in field hockey. So uh, East Lime still alive in volleyball. A lot of, a lot of local teams. You're going to be running around the state. A lot of places to go. But here tonight, 42 to 16, the Falcons put a thumping on the East Lime Vikings as they maintain playoff hope in Class L, moving 
to six and two on the year. Next up for East Lyme will be Capital Prep Achievement and then Thanksgiving Day against Ledger in what might be a play-in game for either team. Ledger's still mathematically alive as well in Class S and Fitch alive in Class L. That's all for us here from Door Field. For the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien and Peter Wappy and the crew, Mikey D down on the sidelines and the junior voice of game day to my left, I am Casey O'Neill. Good night, everybody. <laughs>